Hello, people watching vehicle reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R. It's about time they put a V8 back into the Raptor and this time they added a supercharger to it. So today I'm gonna get it up into the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how it differs from a regular Raptor and then go give it some beans and meatballs. I don't know if dinosaurs like meatballs and beans. That's nerve wracking. Are you gonna fall over? Now's not the time to test it. Oh, is that a steely? No. Wait, is that the same wheel? Oh, it is. It's got a matching spare and these are forged. That's not cheap. Look at these tips. It's huge. It looks like a shrunken HKS Dragger 2. First and foremost, this thing is still a truck. So towing wise, adding a VA to it, you gain 500 pounds of towing capacity, now 8,700 pounds with the Raptor R. What limits a truck like this is towing capacity though, isn't so much the engine, it's the suspension, which this one has a five link with a pan hard bar. Notice how big these springs are. They're divorced from the rear axle. They just kind of float back here. Speaking of pan hard bar, look at that. There's a little Doug DeMiro treat on it. The Raptor R comes with a Dana 60 rear axle with a 410 final drive ratio and electronic locker. It's paired with a uh, set a 3.1 inch diameter Fox adjustable dampers, a little barnacle up there and adjust the dampening rate. Holy shit. These are like actual human shin guards for sports. Has a very similar muffler setup as what you get on the six cylinder Raptor. That's interesting. With this third little pipe that comes down here on the center, divorced from the two larger diameter ones that have the actuators to open and close them. Despite Ford adding a larger V8 to the P702 third generation Raptor, this still only weighs 5,960 pounds with a 58 to 42 front to rear weight distribution, which makes this 800 100 pounds lighter than its competitor, the Ram T-Rex, thanks to this thing having a bunch of aluminum body panels as well as a cab and a aluminum block compared to the cast iron one in the T-Rex. And a drive shaft so girthy that it might be mistaken for a WMD. Scrap if dropped. I mean, what happens if this thing gets slammed on a rock? Does that constitute being dropped? Is it plastic? Oh, it is plastic. They use plastic because it slides so much easier on rocks off-road than metal does. It looks like it's mild aluminized in the rear section of the exhaust, but up here on the mid pipe, it is all stainless. And outside diameter, it's a thick boy. Measures in at, wow, dual 76 millimeter diameter piping. For those of you that only know SAE, that's three inch piping. Three inch dual piping. thick skitty boy underneath your two-speed transfer case manufactured by Borg Warner for Ford to your typical one-to-one -one ratio in high and a 2.64 to one in low range. Well, that's kind of smart. They put the EVAP canister above that skid plate next to the transfer case as well too. I'll keep it protected. Plenty of heat insulation right above it as well as a transmission cross member, which is removable for maintenance. There's even heat insulation on the side of the frame rail. Oh, what the fuck? Did someone run over cow shit? I think my hair oh, I'm gonna puke. They did a good job on the crossover pipe too. Usually these are smushed underneath the transmission, but this one's the same diameter, perfectly round, and it doesn't protrude down below the cross member. Up above my head and above this fairly beefy steel skid plate is one and only transmission available with the Raptor R. It is a 10R80, 10 speed automatic that was jointly developed between Ford and General Motors several years back. You do get one of those in the six cylinder turbo Raptor. However, for the supercharged V8, they have made some revisions to it to include a larger and beefier 260 millimeter torque converter to handle the additional torque as well as an upgraded four pinion planetary set and some other minor tweaks and revisions to the transmission in general including a different tcu tune 
for it as well. Up front, the Raptor R has a double wishbone independent front suspension with a cast aluminum lower, as well as the knuckle assembly. And the upper wishbone is made out of steel. And again, you get those Fox Racing dampers. And as far as the front anti-sway bar goes, it's got some beefy end links too. It measures in at approximately, geez, 30 millimeter. One thing I found kind of odd though, and I couldn't find much info on, is the fact that the Raptor R does not have a Torsen front diff like you get in the regular Raptor. Instead, this just has an e-locker and utilizes the brakes to mimic one. I'm guessing maybe because the Torsen unit just couldn't handle the additional torque of the supercharged V8. What I do know is that is one hell of an access panel in this skid plate. This thing is so tough. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Oh, geez. <gasps> Ooh. Very active ABS on that one. It was bouncing and shimmying, obviously, because the suspension travel is floaty. That braking was just made possible thanks to me slapping the tire with a pointer finger and a 13.8 inch or 350 millimeter front rotor paired with a rather girthy and large set of two piston floating front calipers. It's remember, it is the size of the pot, not the amount of, I don't know where this is going. The wheels, they are a Forge model block 17 by eight and a half positive 30 millimeter offset wheel. Ah, okay, yeah, it's just this outer little fake ring that pops off and then you can put the real one on there since they're not technically street legal, but. And they're wrapped in a set of BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA 37-1250s. Got some 37s on this rig, standard. Ford did this on another vehicle too. I think it was a Bronco Raptor. It looks like a manual lock-in hub. This one's equipped with a break over angled chastity belt. Just joking. It's actually higher than where the frame is at, so it wouldn't, wouldn't matter. Out back, you get a slightly smaller diameter, 336 millimeter or 13.2 inch rear rotor with a single piston caliper. The wheel and the tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. First, I must conduct a assessment of bolstering capabilities. And, oh, it's okay. The seats though, they do everything except massage your ass. They're heat-elated and ventilated, as well as the steering wheel is heat-elated. Also, as a fun anti-theft feature, you can use to keep morons from stealing your vehicle. You press this, and then it hides the shift lever. You flop this guy down, and they'll never know how to get this thing going. As far as drive modes go, I have this little dial I can turn right here. You can go from normal over to the left, sport, which automatically puts it in four auto, and then tow haul and slippery. There's also a button on the steering wheel, which you can configure for my mode. It has an R on there for Raptor. I put my exhaust into Baja, my suspension also into off-road, and then put it into too high, which you can't do in the T-Rex. And lastly, turn off traction control. And then sport for everything else. That's what I call full fuck face mode. Because when you are in this mode, this setting, it is peak face ability to drive like a complete asshole and irritate non-car people. I, however, am going to, for this test, put it into sport because I want four auto. And uh, I will leave traction control off because in four auto, I don't think it's gonna spin all four tires. All right, see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Woo, jeez! That's good, that's plenty, that's plenty. NSX, I think this is the most aggressive launch in a vehicle I've tested yet. That was wild. I have goosebumps literally everywhere right now. Holy shit. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, that's, that's not light. Hood struts. Whoa. Weird. 
A little ground strap going to, <laughs> that makes sure your hood insulation's grounded. Underneath the hood of this 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R is the Carnivore 5.2 liter, all aluminum, four cam, supercharged V8 that produces 700 horsepower at 6,650 RPM and 640 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. Now, the Carnivore is based on the Predator engine you get in the GT500. However, this essentially just has a different tune and a smaller pulley than what you get on the Predator. Also, this isn't trying to kill aliens. It's just trying to eat meat. That bad chicken right there is the 2.65 liter Eaton TVS supercharger. It's a twin screw unit, in case you weren't aware. That means it basically has two screws that force feed the suck, squeeze, bang, blow operation. Digging in a little bit deeper on this carnivore supercharged V8. Now, like I said, it is an aluminum block. However, it has what's called plasma transfer wire arc cylinder liners, which essentially is a thermal plasma spray that is sprayed into the walls of the cylinder and it bonds to the aluminum block creating the liner. Now this does have a 94 by 93 millimeter bore and stroke with a 9.5 to one compression ratio, forged crank, forged rods and forged aluminum pistons. Unlike its other dinosaur rival, the Ford does not have a pushrod V8. This is a four cam V8. You can see those massive heads right there. Itty bitty, tiny little oil cap, so small. Just like the Predator, this is a traditional port injected V8. Look at the size of the snorkel right here for the air box. That thing could suck in a, what are those little dinosaurs called, compies? Could eat a whole compy. This is wild, I'm 5'11 and I can barely reach the hood. <laughs> off off-road I'm gonna do a little bit of a Baja test shifting into Baja mode puts it into four high oh it changes the color of the truck to they should offer it in that color that's pretty sick oh automatically brings up the trail cam too in Baja mode sweet this thing's got just a hair over 13 inches of ground clearance and uh, 14 and 13 inches of travel respectively front to rear I think I said that backwards whatever apologies Man, these bumps that I'm going over, I would normally crawl over at like 10 miles an hour in a normal vehicle. <laughs> it's super smooth and soft over massive bumps. For the hill climb test, normally the hill I'm about to do, I say is the less difficult of the two hills, but because of all the rain, it has eroded and now became more difficult, I feel, than the more difficult hill. So for this, I'm going to put it into rock crawl. Doesn't really make sense for this. There's no rocks to crawl, but I'm gonna try it just because I wanted to use that mode. Which automatically puts it into four low and locks the rear diff. Now the truck's like a bronze color, that's so, they need to offer these colors, that is sick. And then, oh, I wanna use my one pedal mode. Push trail, one pedal drive on. That's always fun. And I don't wanna slide, this is super, super slippery. I put the approach angle and departure angle and brake lever on the screen because I can't remember numbers while I'm trying not to slide and destroy the side of this truck. So, oh, that camera's coming in clutch right now. It actually shows how deep that ravine is in the center. If I slid into that, it would probably rip one of these running boards off. Ooh, it's starting to slide. Not a challenge at all, as it, it shouldn't really be a challenge for this thing. Should I go down this? I'm gonna go down the really steep hill because it's like dropping off the face of the earth if you come from the top. I've never gone down this before. This is actually terrifying. Oh my, this is literally like driving off the face of the earth. I, other than my camera, I can't see anything. Oh, this is nerve wracking. And I wanna avoid this tree. I don't wanna scratch up the tree. Scraping my running board. Okay. Ooh, 
Walker. 20, oh, it's not that steep. 24 degrees. Ooh. 26 degrees. It would be un-American of me if I didn't at least attempt a donut in this thing. Holy shit! I feel like I'm in a hurricane! That is the craziest donut I've ever done in my entire life! It blew the dust! out away from me and it literally looked like I was in the eye of a hurricane. I can't even, I can't find Angel. He's out here piloting the drone somewhere. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so just like the Bronco Raptor that I reviewed about a year ago, there's a link up above if you want to check that out. This has the trail turn assist feature, which locks up your inner rear wheel when you're turning to help it turn sharper, which is really nice on something like an F-150, especially this super crew one. Hell yeah, that's how you get it to work. Oh, that's sweet. This is nice in an F-150 because this truck's long, so. Oh, that's great. I love it more in this than I did in the Bronco Raptor. Yup, swing that ass end around. Man, this is seriously the best feature. Considering this truck's over a hundred thousand bucks, you'd expect the interior to at least look somewhat nice, not just like a regular base model F-150. They did a good job by putting some dry carbon accents. Whatever this material is, I love the look of this plastic, it's zippy. The dash has this stitched denim soft material to it. It feels durable, cheap, and nice all at the same time. Wireless charge pad cubby is huge. It does have the trailer brake controller and the tow package. It's more of that banging sound system, so good. Upfitter switches for accessories. I got room for activities for days back here. I pulled all this stuff up. Oh, well, there's the power inverter. Juice box cup holder. I like six, eight cup holders back here. Is there more in here? More, there's like enough cup holders to make your bladder explode. Ventilation, no ventilation back here though. 400 watt AC power inverter and USB and USB-C. So this thing is $109,000. And for a lot of people that might seem ridiculous, but this is basically a street legal trophy truck with a warranty on it. And obviously it's not on level of a real trophy truck, but then again, it is something that I'm comfortably riding in with ventilated seats. It's got an amazing stereo system in it and it's warranted. that's not an easy thing to pull off. Uh, fuel economy, it, I've been averaging, we don't have to, wor don't worry about that. Don't worry about what I've been averaging. It's worse than what this thing is rated at. But you don't buy one of these because you're trying to get an economical, efficient vehicle. You buy one of these because you want to really use the face button and just do obnoxious shit. to give this Raptor R some scores and confuse some of you in the comments section. First up is the bean score. It's the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the Raptor R gets a rating of... Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value. And the Raptor R, just over $109,000, is getting a rating of... Next is the wrench score, it's the assessment of ease of maintenance, and it's getting a rating of... Next is the meatball score, the assessment of off-road capabilities. And the Raptor R gets a rating of, oh wait, a thingy. The Raptor R gets a rating of, I brought it out in the wild, wild thingy. Lastly is the Penguin score. It's the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the Raptor R gets a rating of, oh, holy shit, I bent it. I has got a bent tip. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.